Hey everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our channel, then typically speaking, you will find us vlogging our various adventures around the world. However, with this series of videos, we're trying to do something a little bit different. And the reason for this is because as we've gone through each of the countries that we visited along the way, then we have noticed that there are certain things that we're not generally accustomed to in the UK or Canada. The reason that we have this channel is so that we can share our travel experiences in the hopes of inspiring others to travel more. So we're hoping to share some of the tips and tricks that we've picked up along the way in each of the countries that we visited in the hopes that if you wanna to go to the same places, that you'll be armed with some hopefully helpful knowledge and information that will make planning and navigating around easier for you. This video is gonna be focused on traveling around Egypt. If you've seen our videos, then you'll know that we went to Cairo, Alexandria, Aswan, Abu Simbel, and Luxor. And honestly, with the stuff that we saw, we really recommend that you do go and watch those videos, even if you have before. Well worth it. While a few of the pointers that we're going to be giving you are going to be specific to the places that we've been, the vast majority of these are going to be more general about the country itself. We hope that you find these tips and tricks helpful. The good news is that you don't have to arrange a visa before you arrive in Egypt. You can buy a visa upon arrival. There is a bank branch that is located just before immigration and they sell them for $25 US per person. Egypt is one of the countries that we encountered that is very, very heavily cash based. You will be hard pressed to find anywhere in Egypt that accepts card payments. So with that, make sure that you have a good amount of both US dollars and Egyptian pounds on you when you arrive into the country. Because both US dollars and Egyptian pounds are used in the country, it's really important that you know which is being referenced when you are booking a tour or going to pay an entrance fee or at a restaurant. In general, when you're booking a tour, it's probably gonna be quoted in US dollars. Whereas at tourist attractions, it's likely going to be that the entrance fee is quoted in Egyptian pounds. As with a number of places in this part of the world, then you will find that you can use the tap water to wash things, including yourself and your toothbrush. However, you should not drink it because it is not potable. Therefore, if you are going to be getting drinking water, you should get bottled water. And thankfully, as ever, in these countries, it is very, very affordable. We'd like to preface the next few pointers by saying that we know a lot of people who have gone to Egypt who feel like they've been scammed and harassed. And we're very fortunate that that was not our experience at all. I think the reason for that is the way we went about traveling through the country. And just so you know, we did not book a tour. We had tours along the way, but we didn't go on a big one. But I think the way we did it was probably the best way to do it cost effectively and in a manner that meant we were not harassed or scammed. So if you're traveling through Egypt by yourself, I think it's worth noting that public transportation within cities is nigh on impossible for foreigners. There are plenty of local buses, it seems, but I think that if a tourist were to take a local bus, this is one of those areas where other people have complained about being scammed and harassed. So if you want to avoid that, it's probably best to arrange a driver and a lot of accommodations as well as guest houses will be able to arrange that for you. You can negotiate with them and most of them have a very reasonable price. We were traveling on a budget and staying at a lovely guest house in Cairo and they were able to provide us with a driver for what we thought was quite a reasonable cost and it was a really good way to ensure our safety and enable us to enjoy the city to a maximum. 
Speaking of public transport, it's worth mentioning about intercity trains. Technically, there are routes that run between all of the cities in Egypt that you would want to visit. However, the system that is in place really favors the local populations. So the seats on Egyptian trains are given to Egyptian citizens first. And so basically foreigners then get whatever is left. With that, it is quite likely in a lot of instances that an intercity train that you might want to get is something that's not actually available to you because it is booked. And so if you do go up to the ticket counter, it is quite possible that someone will tell you that there are no trains available when you go to the ticket desk. So do expect that to happen. There have also been, we have heard, issues with punctuality about trains. You could be waiting for several hours before you even board it, even if you are lucky enough to get a ticket. And the other thing to consider is that it is very well documented. It's even noted on the Egyptian Railways website that foreigners will be charged a higher price than locals just by default. So be prepared for all of those if you are planning on taking intercity rail in Egypt. Obviously, this didn't mesh well with our style of travel. We wanted to make sure that we were guaranteed to get between cities, but this was because we were doing our own thing. If you were to be visiting Egypt on a Egypt-wide, well-organized tour, then obviously you don't have to worry about this. But for anybody who's trying to forge out their own itinerary because cost is more of an issue, then this is just something to bear in mind. If you're kind of doing your own travels like we are, obviously, as Nick said, the train is an option, but it comes with some of its hurdles. But what we found is that the internal flights make it very easy for tourists to travel between cities and they are quite affordable. I think the area that you want to consider is how you're going to get from your accommodation to the airport because as we mentioned public transportation within cities is probably a little bit sketchy for tourists. So what we did was just arrange a driver with our accommodation to take us to the airport and then on the other side we asked our accommodation if they had a driver to pick us up and the guest houses that we stayed at did not charge an exorbitant amount for this fee. As part of my research on Egypt I did look at big tours and the price they were charging for a transfer was more than double what any of our accommodations charge for an airport transfer. So it's worth talking to them and then you'll be safe. Obviously, when you are in Egypt, it's likely that you're going to want to buy things and especially you're going to be paying for entrance fees and things like that. So there are just a couple of things to consider. The first is that when you do go to any of the tourist sites, then there is a separate price for the locals versus tourists. This is actually kind of common practice for a number of other countries that we've visited, including Morocco as well. So don't be put off by that. It actually still ends up being pretty reasonably priced, even despite the discrepancy in price there. For everything else though, it is unlikely that you're going to see marked prices on anything. So with that, it is always worth asking for the price of what you're trying to buy before buying it. It is also worth noting that bartering and haggling and all of that kind of stuff is very much expected of you, even as a tourist. So unless it is food where there is a flat price, everything else is subject to negotiation. We found it very affordable to book tours within each city that we are in with our guest house or accommodation. The tours are the most expensive part and by tour we kind of mean driver. They have limited knowledge but it is still information from a local and they are ensuring that you get from point A to point B safely without being harassed. They'll mention what scams you should look out for and also they will sometimes come with you 
to the tourist attractions, which means that you're less likely to be harassed by any of the market vendors trying to sell things because they're not gonna go and try and take advantage of one of the locals who you're with. That being said, if you want a tour with an Egyptologist, then you're looking at probably double the price as if you just go with a local tour guide as I described before. Thankfully, by traveling the way that we did, where we arranged our tours and transfers directly with the accommodation that we were staying at, then we did actually end up avoiding a lot of the scams that a lot of people will tell you about on the internet. However, it is still worth being on your guard because there will still be people who tell you that things are far away when they're only 10 minutes down the road. There will be others who will start a conversation with you and then expect money. And that may even be security guards who ask to take a photo and then they ask for money as well. It is a little bit of a minefield, so it is just worth being on your guard so that you're not being taken advantage of by somebody who tells you something that isn't true. As part of both big tours, as well as tours that you arrange with your accommodation, you're often taken to some local shops where they're often selling their local wares, crafts, foods, and other products. Just know that you are under no obligation to purchase anything from them. It's okay if you simply go and listen to their spiel, browse, and leave without purchasing anything. In instances when you are going on a tour or you're transferring between cities, it is really worth noting that, as with most countries, tourist attractions are just expensive, and anything affiliated with those or even close to them will also be expensive. However, the other thing to bear in mind is that the same goes for truck stops as well. So with that, if you are planning on taking a long journey anywhere or you are going as part of a tour group, then it may be worth just making sure that you stock up on supplies before you go anywhere so that you're not paying over the odds. Just like we mentioned in our tips and tricks video for Jordan, you will probably need to ask for toilet paper in Egypt as well, unless you are comfortable using the water hose beside the toilet, which again is basically like a built-in bidet next to the toilet. All of the accommodations we stayed in did have toilet paper on request, so that was no problem. It's just when you're out and about in public going to tourist attractions, there will not be any toilet paper available. So if you do require it, it may be worth it to tuck some in a bag and bring it with you. As ever, Egypt is a predominantly Muslim country, so places of worship are free by default. However, if you are planning on going into a mosque or any other place of worship, then it is always a good idea to be respectful of the dress code. So with that, cover your hair, your shoulders and your knees and you'll be welcome in. The food here in Egypt, just like in Jordan and many other Middle Eastern countries, is absolutely to die for. We found that in Egypt, the best way to experience local cuisine was actually to book at a guest house because you were really treated like family there. They prepare feasts for you and it is all traditional and freshly made, absolutely delicious. You cannot beat it. And the other thing you should know about this is it is okay to eat with your hands. You don't always need to use silverware. As we've mentioned before, public transport is kind of limited anyway, but that is also the case in Cairo because it is absolutely vast. I don't think we can even describe to you just how big the city of Cairo actually is. So with that, then you are definitely gonna need private transportation in order to get to the places that you want to because you are highly unlikely to get to do so under your own steam. The other thing to mention is that Giza, which is the site of the pyramids, is actually a suburb of Cairo, technically speaking. So with that, it's really not that far away from Cairo airport, first of all, but unlike what popular media may have you believe, the Great Pyramids are actually not far out in the desert at all. They are pretty much on the doorstep of the main city. So 
getting to the Great Pyramids from Cairo or Giza is really not that big a challenge. Speaking of accessing historic sites and tourist attractions, Abu Simbel is one that you shouldn't miss. It is definitely one of the smaller historic sites and tourist attractions compared to Aswan and Luxor, for example, but it's definitely worth it to go. There's a few ways that you can access it. We went from Aswan by coach bus. Just know that if you're doing this, that it's about a four hour trip each way. One thing we didn't know when we went to Egypt was that Abu Simbel actually has its own airport. So that is another option if you don't want the inconvenience of having to take a lengthy coach bus journey, but that could also be more expensive if you're flying into the airport directly rather than taking a bus. So, you know, do your research at the time and see what works best for your itinerary. And that's about our list. We really did enjoy our time exploring the deep culture and history of Egypt. And we hope that these recommendations that we're providing you will allow for you to enjoy Egypt in a similar fashion. However, as always, we do recognize that we haven't provided all the tips and tricks that are in existence for a good time in Egypt. So if you have any further suggestions, then feel free to put them in the comments below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.